Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono blue artifact deck built around Tesseract Betrayer of Flesh. A 4 mana planeswalker from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty starts out at 4 loyalty and has a very interesting passive ability, saying the first activated ability of an artifact we activate each turn costs 2 generic mana less to activate. So you can imagine if we make use of that 2 mana discount both in our turn and the opponent's turn, we get a 4 mana advantage over the opponent, which will very quickly add up. Now we do have to be a little bit careful when using that passive ability that we don't tap one of our mana artifacts before making use of that ability, otherwise it will go to waste, so we do have to be a little bit careful, but that's also the fun of playing a Tesseret deck. Then the plus one lets us draw two cards and then discard two cards unless we discard an artifact card, and given that we have over 40 artifacts in our deck it will often provide card advantage, especially in the late game once we don't mind discarding our ramp artifacts. The minus two can turn one of our artifacts into a 4-4 creature, good for playing defense or pressuring opposing planeswalkers, and the minus six ultimate, which we can get to very quickly, gives us an emblem saying whenever an artifact we control becomes tapped, we get to draw a card. So great synergy with all the ramp artifacts in our deck that will now not only tap for mana, but also provide card advantage. Then the deck is split up into a few different categories, starting out with the artifact payoff category, where we have a Rise and Shine, a 2 mana sorcery turning one of our non-creature artifacts into a 4-4 creature, but can also be overloaded for 6 mana, in which case it turns all our non-creature artifacts into 4-4 creatures, so it can be an excellent finisher once we have a few artifacts in play. Patchwork Automaton from Kamigawa, a 1-1 creature with a ward 2 that picks up plus 1 plus 1 counters whenever we cast artifact spells. Emery gets a 1 mana discount for each artifact we control, so we can often play her for a single blue mana, we'll mill 4 cards, and then the activated ability allows us to replay artifacts from our graveyard, so a nice source of card advantage. Can also be a good choice as your commander, as it plays very well with the commander attacks and the discount from artifacts in the late game, can often still play her for a single blue mana, but it is also a high tier commander, so the drawback is that you will face other high tier decks. Then a Psy Master Thopterist makes a 1-1 Thopter token whenever we cast an artifact spell, can potentially sacrifice artifacts for card advantage as well. Nettlesist gets plus 1 plus 1 for each artifact and or enchantment we control, and comes attached to a Phyrexian Germ token thanks to a living weapon, but it's actually an equipment we can still move around. The Antiquities War on the first two chapters lets us look at the top five cards of our library to reveal an artifact and put it into our hand, and then on the final chapter turns all our artifacts into 5-5 five, five creatures, so that can also potentially end the game out of nowhere. We've got Karn Sign of Urza, providing Karn advantage with the plus one and minus one, and can make Karnstruct tokens with the minus two, which also scale with the number of artifacts we control. Tesseret Artifice Master makes Thopter tokens with E plus one, and can potentially draw two cards with the zero ability if we control three or more artifacts. Then Ugin the Ineffable gives all our colorless spells a two mana discount, which includes most of our artifacts, then can make spirit tokens with E plus one, and destroy permanents that are one or more colors with E minus three. And finally, Jenga Taxius Progress Tyrant from Kamigawa, a 5 5 legendary Phyrexian Praetor that lets us copy or instance sorceries and artifacts for the first time each turn, and when the opponent does the same, they get countered for the first time each turn as well. Then the next category are card draw effects, but first off, I want to highlight a few cards that potentially let us ultimate Tesseret the turn after we play them, including Animation Module, Contentious Plan, and Tesseret's Gambit. So by proliferating we can add an extra loyalty counter to Tesseret, so we can on turn 5 use the proliferate card and then use the minus 6 right away. And then we also have the animation module, which for 1 mana if we have a Tesseret in play can activate to add an extra loyalty counter to our planeswalker, which also lets us potentially ultimate on turn 5 if we plussed the turn before. Then we also have the reality chip, which can potentially be reconfigured for just a single blue mana with Tesseret out to let us play cards of the top of our deck. Then both Maze Mind Tome and Reckoner Bankbuster are cards we can activate for free with a Tesseret in play, so also very easy to activate them in the opponent's turn to draw a card. We've got the Vidalcan Archmage, which draws a card whenever we cast an artifact spell. Mystic Forge also lets us play colorless spells of the top of our deck. Time Warp to take an extra turn, also a nice way to potentially ultimate Tesseret. The Deck of Many Things also gets activated for free to potentially draw two cards or get back cards from our graveyard. 
Shimmer Dragon can tap two untapped artifacts we control to draw a card, and as long as we control four or more artifacts it has Hexproof. Thought Monitor has affinity for artifacts, so we can often cast it on the cheap, and when it enters it also draws two. And Reality Heist also basically has affinity for artifacts, and then lets us look at the top seven cards of our library to reveal two artifacts to put into our hand. Then the next couple categories are all ways to generate extra mana, ramp artifacts, including a Moonsnare prototype from Kamigawa, can tap an untapped artifact or creature we control to add colorless mana, can also be channeled for interaction. Then we've got a few artifacts that typically aren't used to generate extra mana, rather used for mana fixing, but with the Tesseret in play it changes how they operate. Cards like Prophetic Prism, which draws a card when it enters, can pay a mana, tap it to add one mana of any color, so now with the Tesseret in play we can activate it for free, and it makes one mana of any color instead. Then we also have Chromatic Sphere, which is very similar, has to be sacrificed. Terrarion has to be sacrificed to add two mana in any combination of colors, so it can ramp us for two with a Tesseret in play, and same goes with a Guild Globe. Then we've got a few more classic ramp cards. Renowned Weaponsmith can add double colorless that we can spend to cast artifact spells or activate abilities of artifacts. And we also have the Automated Artificer from Kamigawa, which is pretty similar, adding just one colorless. Then we've got Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, and Mindstone as well as Ornithopter of Paradise, which just add one mana. Then at three mana we've got more ramp artifacts with Midnight Clock, eventually letting us shuffle our graveyard back into our library and draw a fresh hand. Heirloom can act as graveyard hate, that can also potentially be activated for free. The Letter can draw a card if we sacrifice it. Mana Geode lets us scry one. We've got a Network Terminal, which potentially lets us loot if we tap another untapped artifact. Relic can be sacrificed to gain 3 life and draw a card if we reach the city's blessing. Palladio Mirror makes double colorless if it survives. Skyclave Relic can be kicked to make several copies of itself. The Celestis lets us loot away some cards and gain life if it switches between day and night. And the Unstable Obelisk can be sacrificed to destroy target permanent. And then at 4 mana we've got even more ramp cards with Hedron Archive. The Key to the Archive lets us draft from the powerful 15 card spellbook. We've got Solemn Simulacrum finding a land when it enters, drawing a card when it dies, good for protecting our Planeswalker. Gilded Lotus taps for 3 mana of any one color. And finally Paradox Engine, a very scary combo card, powerful enough to be banned in Commander, and probably could be banned in Historic Brawl as well, because now we can float a whole bunch of mana before casting a spell, untap all those artifacts again, so we can cast more and more spells, very good alongside card draw effects and card draw engines, especially those that let us play cards off the top of our deck and very quickly we find ourselves generating heaps of mana and casting half of our deck. And then the next category are counter spells. I tried not to include too many of them, but we've got a few artifact themed ones with a disruption protocol, tapping an untapped artifact we control as an additional cost or pay one mana, and metallic rebuke which has improvise. And then we've got some classics like wash away, good at countering the opponent's commander, negate for non-creature spells, and of course counter spell. And then the final category are interactive spells, where we've got our spell bomb to potentially bounce a creature. We've got Pacification Array, which can be activated for free with the Tesseret out to tap an artifact or creature. And then Sky Sovereign can deal 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker when it enters or attacks, and we can animate it thanks to Tesseret's minus 2 ability if we don't have creatures to crew it. And then River's Rebuke, a staple in any blue brawl deck, returning all the opponent's stuff back to their hand. And then our mana base, a few highlights include Treasure Vault, which counts as an artifact, so that can potentially enable some synergies, although be careful with it and Tazeret's passive ability that you don't tap it before getting the discount. And then Inventor's Fair, potentially gaining some life, letting us tutor up an artifact to potentially get our Paradox Engine if we really want to win the game. And then some other activated abilities, including Karn's Bastion to proliferate, another way to potentially ultimate Tazeret on turn 5. And then your typical blue value lands like Castle Ventress to scry, Hall of the Storm Giants to turn into a 7-7 creature, and the new channel land from Kamigawa. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Facing Satoru Umezawa. And yeah, we've got a turn to Cold Steel Hearts. Couple more ramp cards and then Rivers Rebuke to reset the board, hopefully, before they can cheat anything scary into play. So, play our Haven 
which we'll be able to activate pretty soon. It's going to be Silencer. Can take out Planeswalkers with the ability as well. So I'm probably not going to play Tesseract since our opponent's got all this early pressure. And instead focus on ramping maybe into Jingataxius here could be fun. So I think now just go for Heralic. Opponent holding priority when empty-handed could imply that they have a Pact of Negation in hand. For now it's going to be a Moon Circuit Hacker. Ninjutsu gets to draw a card. And Shard, of course, draws two more. So they're not quite going for their commander yet. Okay. So we can open with a Gilded Lotus. And then I would have enough mana to play Tesseret afterwards. Does not sound bad. Or we can play Bankbuster and activate it. Maybe Tesseret as a distraction is okay, although we know about the silencer that can take it out. So maybe that's not the correct approach, although then again, if our opponent kills Tesseret, they may not be able to kill Jinkataxius. So, yeah, maybe going for Tesseret's not all that bad. And a lot of good options. Probably want to keep the land. Maybe get rid of like a bank buster with the idea of eventually getting it back with deck of many things. And then array to deal with our creatures might be more important. So silencer gonna go for Tesseract here. but they'll still have to discard a creature to do so. Now we do suspect a potential Pact of Negation here, which might make things more complicated. Otherwise we could just slam down Jingataxius. Silver Raven can scry. And our opponent keeps up a bunch of mana. Alright, so how much mana are we working with? I guess we have enough for Jingataxius and keep up Wash Away. Is that correct? Yeah, that appears to be the case. So I could counter a counter spell. And then once Jin is in play, we can block the Silencer. Yeah, let's give it a shot. That's going to be a Lofty Denial, which I will counter. And then it could also have a Pact. Yeah. Alright, so no Jinga Taxi, sadly. Would have been fun. Opponents forced to pay for Pact at least. And now we get to untap. Deck of many things could still get our Jinga Taxis back. And Reverse Rebuke can reset their board. So let's see here. If I go for Reverse Rebuke, how much mana do we have left over? Four? Not enough for a deck of many things, but can play Array plus Guardian Idol. I think that's where I want to start. And then we can leverage our mana advantage further. Now we do have to watch out for Silencer. Using Ninjutsu again. It's 
Sky Diver gonna steal one of our artifacts here. Goes for a Cold Steel Heart. Fair enough. Okay, so let's say we were to play Tazeret. Prefer to avoid tapping any of our artifacts if possible. Although it's probably not feasible here. Can play Deck of Many Things as well, I think. And then I can use Deck of Many Things for free in the opponent's turn. They kill Tezzeret again with the Silencer. That's one option. Can just play Deck of Many Things, activate it. And potentially get something back. But uh, I think we start with Tezzeret's. And then we'll plus. Obelisk can go. And then we can play deck. And I can activate it for free here. Points going face. They can pick up Skydiver again to then steal more artifacts after. They go for Silver Raven for extra damage instead. And they've got another Ninjutsu, of course, to pick up Skydiver. That happens. And then we'll use a deck here. Rolling a 1. Returning a Reverse Rebuke. Not bad. And let's see here. So that also returns the stolen artifacts back. Ulamog to combo with uh, Umezawa, but they haven't played our commander yet. Could have put Tazarad in Graveyard as well to potentially get back with our deck of many things. Seems a little risky. So we're going to try and leverage our mana advantage here. And now Deck of Many Things as our card draw engine. But yeah, all these cheap creatures are a good way to circumvent River's Rebuke in a way. Okay, so definitely have to start here. And then we can still use Deck of Many Things. But want to play this first in case we need to maybe negate. Yeah, negate the negates. Get our Cold Steel Heart back, and then we want a deck of many things. Doesn't leave mana for anything else. Or we can play Palladium Mirror, for instance, to add more mana for next turn. I think we want to be using this every turn, pretty much. Get back Jengitaxius, perfect. Although the Silencer can once again take care of it, so that has been a thorn in our side all game. And they've got enough evasive creatures here to keep up the ninjutsu. Time for Umezawa. Alright, so we'll get to untap. Thought Monitor, nice flying blocker. Quite good here. Start there. Okay, next up. Could go for Jingataxius, although it's very much possible they're holding another counter spell. So I'm less inclined to go for it here. And I also need to make sure we can avoid ninjutsu so we can protect it. So instead, I could go for Archmage, play Cold Steel Heart, maybe activate Deck of Many Things again. Probably activate Deck first. Get to draw two. Desert's Gambit, probably not a card I want to cast right now. 
So we'll go Archmage, Cold Steel Heart, and then I can still use Array. Alright, put in Dos Fire off Counter Spell. That happens. And then I think we stick to the plan. Cold Steel Heart plus Array. Opponent moves to combat, so Array probably taps down Umezawa, and then Monitor can block another flyer. Although they're unlikely to want a ninjutsu with Umezawa, because it's pretty expensive to replace, so maybe I'm still better off tapping a flyer, and then Scry 2 tapped as opposed to Scry 1. So we can block. They could still ninjutsu. And hopefully their last card is not some huge creature like Ulamog. And just a silencer. At least they didn't get to draw any extra cards with Umezawa. Thought monitor down. But yeah, now we know what they're working with. Opponent's just gonna run out all their creatures. And now we can finally maybe get Jenga Taxis going. How does that sound? So play Jenga Taxis. Can double Palladium Mirror, for instance. Deck of many things getting back. A Reverse Rebuke would be ideal, but it seems unlikely here. So. Yeah, I like doubling my creatures to get on the board. And then... Still have enough mana to both activate Array and Deck of Many Things. But I might end up using Relic to gain 3 life, so I think we just pass here. Since we can use these at instant speed. And then there's only one flyer that I have to tap down. So we'll start there. And then we should be able to prevent ninjutsu. Just trade off a bunch. And our opponent concedes. Oof, very close and interesting game with Silencer. A nice answer to our creatures and planeswalkers. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a nice hand facing Edgar, black-white vampires, presumably. Yeah, we'll keep. Signets into potentially turn three Tesseret. And then we've got our Karn's Bastion, so we could potentially ultimate on turn five. But I imagine our opponent's going to have some early creatures to pressure our Planeswalker. So we might take a slower approach. An early Mystic Forge to provide card advantage could also be nice. So do they have an early creature here? They do not. So yeah, I could run out Tesseret and potentially ultimate next turn. That sounds appealing. So we'll plus. And then probably okay to get rid of Obelisk. Haven't Play the Bastion to kind of keep it a secret. Alright, sadly, Murder Strider takes care of Tesseret. So we'll have to go with a different plan. So maybe play Mystic Forge and then see what's on top. Blink Moth Nexus. Not the best draw, so I could get rid of it with the Forge, in case there's a one-mana artifact on top we can play. Lotus isn't bad. Field of Ruin could destroy our Bastion as well, as our opponent plays Edgar. Now there's a Letter on top we can play, and then 
might still have some mana afterwards to cast a Thought Monitor, for instance. Do I want to get rid of the land? I think I do. Key to the Archive we can play for free instead. And what do we find? Nothing too exciting. Probably keep the Lightning Bolts. And then... What do I get rid of? Could just be the Bolt itself, honestly, since River's Rebuke and Sky Sovereign should be enough interaction. Sanctum Seeker can drain us. Okay. Now I won't be able to play Psy off the top. So, got a couple options. I could play a Thought Monitor to draw, maybe find more cards we can play for free. We're also getting to the point where we might have to Rivers Rebuke, so we don't take too much damage. But uh, let me start with a Thought Monitor and then see what's next. Since I wouldn't mind drawing Psy. Okay, so nothing on top we like. So do I just Rivers Rebuke here? Maybe use a Forge first. Soaring City. So if we play a land, I have 7 mana total. Not quite enough for Lotus into Rivers Rebuke. Could go Lotus into Psy. That's tempting. We'll have to take a bit of a hit here. But I could jump with Thought Monitor. Could also go for Sky Sovereign, but it doesn't kill anything. Yeah, I think Psy is fine. And then I could use Activated Ability on Psy to potentially sack Thought Monitor and another artifact to draw. Don't know if that's necessarily worth it. Elanda shows up. So it's a lot of expensive vampires we'll be able to bounce. So do I take 8? I probably could. Yeah, let's take it. We're at 7, but now we get to do some very powerful things, including casting a Time Warp. So how do we want to draw our Time Warp? We can just play Tesseract plus play the Time Warp and then we'll be able to ultimate. And get rid of Sky Sovereign, maybe. Although I probably wouldn't need more card draw, so deck of many things might be a little greedy. And then we'll time warp, targeting ourselves. Still get to play Nettle Cysts off the top. Take our extra turn. Probably could have attacked for two, but seems like that's... Not going to be all that important, as we now proliferate. And add a counter to Tesseret to then minus 6. And now we've got all the card draw in the world, pretty much. And we can Reverse Rebuke to bounce the opponent's stuff back. Could have definitely tapped some of our artifacts better to draw more cards with Tesseret, but... At this point, I don't see us uh, losing control of the game. So, can attack for a whole bunch. Draw more cards. Still have a negate at the ready. Mystic Forge could also be activated, but doesn't seem needed. A relic can gain life if we need it. And our opponent set a precarious 12 life. Bishop resolves. But Nettle Cyst is still in equipment. So didn't really accomplish all that much. I guess we'll gain some life here. And yeah, our opponent sees a riding on the wall and concedes. So despite not even playing optimally towards the end, showing the power of an ultimate, on to the next one. Alrighty, we're on the play, facing a Hamza plus one counter deck. 
with a pretty sketchy hand. Only two lands, hard can fix for blue at least. But still seems a little slow. A lot of expensive cards we won't necessarily be able to play. Let's take a mulligan. Alright, this seems a bit more balanced. Module lets me cast a turn two metallic rebuke. And then... Need one more land for both Tesseret and Mystic Forge. We're playing Snow Lands to enable Faceless Haven, so I might see that in action. Alright, can play Hall. And we'll see if there's something worth countering here. Skyclave Cleric, probably we can let resolve. Ornithopter of Paradise can still be played while keeping up our improvised counterspell. And that also sets up Sky Sovereign turn 4. Seems good against the creature deck. Tazrat can turn it into a creature afterwards. Falconer. Yeah, it's probably worthy of a counterspell just to be mana efficient here. And then now I'm not forced to go for Sky Sovereign, I can play Tesseret instead. Let's see if we play Heirloom. Not quite enough mana to play Tesseret afterwards, but we can play Tesseret and then activate Animation Module for just one mana, which will put an extra loyalty on it. And Heirloom, I think, can go. And we can use this anytime. So yeah, we'll pass. And then as long as we activate the module before tapping Ornithopter, we're good. Once we put the ability on the stack, we can pay just using one mana, thanks to Tazrat's passive. If we were to tap Ornithopter first and then activate it, it doesn't work, so it's pretty finicky. But as long as you know how it works, it should not be a problem. And then Ornithopter also gets to block here. So yeah, let's see if we get to Ultimate Tesseret. Would be pretty nice with Ornithopter and Module. Forge can also tap pretty easily. Could of course still wait a turn, maybe go up to 7 loyalty and then Ultimate. And Jani's welcome. That's fine, so they might have a bit of a life gain theme. And Fall of the Imposter for a counter. Alright. So... Clary goes up to 2. I can jump with Ornithopter to guarantee an ultimate. Yeah, that might be worth it, or we can let Tazret take the hits and then Ugin can deal with Cleric. At some point we'll have to exile our Ornithopter, but it's still gonna be a while. So I think Tazret can take the hits. Could also add an extra counter to the Fall of the Imposter with our animation module. But I don't think that's what we want to do. So instead play Ugin. And then I guess I'll be unable to use animation module since I'm tapping the Ornithopter first. But we can plus here. Get rid of... Hmm, interesting. Array deals with the Cleric as well, so I don't have to play Ugin. Discard a letter, I think. And then, let's see, we can play Array after playing our Mage. And then we'll get to draw a card. Haven't used an artifact yet, so I get to use Module now. And then Array in the opponent's turn to tap down Cleric. So that works out beautifully. And then they can make us either sacrifice Ornithopter or Archmage. And this Paradox Engine plus a Tesseret Emblem is going to be quite effective. Twin Blade Paladin resolves. 
Gonna pick up a counter right away. Still dies to Ugin. Tap down Cleric. And then I probably want to add an extra loyalty so we don't lose Tazeret when we ultimate. Minus six. And uh, what's next? Can play maybe a Paradox Engine, although then I can't play anything afterwards unless we draw land, which we haven't played yet. Sure. There we go. Play a spell bomb, or maybe better a prototype. They're both pretty good. Let's go with spell bomb. And then Ornithopter can tap, draw a card. Can play prototype still. I guess going prototype first could have added a little bit more mana with the Paradox Engine. But you can kind of see the synergy here. And then I can pass a turn. And then the plan is going to be activate Pacification Array for free. Tapping, let's say, the Cleric. That draws a card. And then I can use a spell bomb to bounce Paladin. That also draws a card. Prototype can tap at any point as well to make more mana. And the cards keep flowing. So, Archmage down. I think Ornithopter is actually going to be better with our emblem here. But, uh,. Both are fine here. All right, a Liberator, I guess, deals with Paradox Engine, so don't get to have as much fun as we could have, but still in great shape. So Paradox Engine down. We'll make a mana and draw two cards on the way out. There is a Buried Rune in our deck, as well as a deck of many things to potentially get back our Paradox Engine, but it's not really a high priority right now. And the yeah, our opponent has seen enough here. Very understandable when we're holding about 10 cards in hand, about to draw more. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Burgi, so a red potential combo or aggro deck. And what do we think of our hands? It's okay, we can protocol on turn 2 to potentially counter Burgi, and then Terminal helps us ramp into Sky Sovereign. So it's actually quite nice. So Sphere just serving as a way to cast a two mana protocol. I guess since we're on the play, I can maybe afford to play Weaponsmith instead of keeping up protocol. Wily Goblin makes a treasure. Possible they're trying to cast Horn of Bounty instead. Either way, we could do some things here. Sacrifice Fear using the Weaponsmith lets me cast Tesseret if I really want. Could take a different approach of playing Network Terminal and then still having our Disruption Protocol available in case we need to counter something important. Tundra Fumeral will also add 3 mana afterwards. Yeah, I'm not too attached to the Weaponsmith since we can play Sky Sovereign anyway. So I'll hang on to the protocol for later. Eye of Vecna for card draw. Sure. So we could play Sky Sovereign, take care of the Goblin, and then be able to crew it with Tesseret. In case they play Burgi. Or we can play Tesseret and keep Disruption Protocol available, as Tesseret also allows us to 
generate mana with the sphere. Although, let's see. Do we still have enough mana to make that work? Yeah, if we sacrifice sphere, then I guess we'll still be one mana short. How bad is it if they resolve Horn of Bounty? Could be pretty bad for us, so... Yeah, I'll be one mana short of casting protocol if I try and play Tesseract. So I think we should wait a turn. And then I can still loot with Terminal if I want to. Opponent just drawing with Io Vecna instead. Alrighty, Karn's Bastion's exciting. So let me play Tesseract, and then we should still have Protocol available. Chem Plus. I have no about down my and Heirloom can go. And uh, probably gonna take one damage from Wily Goblin, so wouldn't we'll necessarily be able to ultimate with Karn's Bastion, but gets us close. March of Reckless Joy for two for more card advantage, that happens. And Steenkin is a scary one, might be worth countering, although Sky Sovereign could just kill it. So I think we'll let that resolve. And then Burgi doesn't have to be countered, but since we can only kill one of Steamkin or Burgi, I think I will. And then can tap or Sphere. Could have also sacrificed it with Tesseract's ability to uh, draw a card and make a mana. So now Windfall goes to waste. And Sky Sovereign takes care of Steamkin. Tesseract still draws. Hmm, this is tough. Both Deck of Many Things and Mystic Forge are great. Probably prefer Deck of Many Things. Can maybe get back Mystic Forge as well. Play Sky Sovereign. And then could activate Sphere right now, making a mana. I guess that's fine, as I'll still be able to loot with Terminal in the opponent's turn, and finding Pacification Array is perfect, because now I can tap down the Wily Goblin to relieve some pressure off Tesseract. And then the Bastion potentially lets me ultimate. Although we might be better off just animating Sky Sovereign. So there's Burgi again. And moves to combats. Time that for free. And then I can still loot with terminal. Do I need a mindstone? It's pretty good with an ultimate. Alright, so our opponent's gonna get to combo off next turn, but I'll have an ultimate, I think, is the compromise. Or we can animate Sky Sovereign Kill Burgi, which would be the safer play. But it's not as fun, so let's do this. Emblem. Your and then I can play a Mind Stone. And still keep up Metallic Rebuke. That seems fine. Crash through. Just a cantrip. So they might have a bunch of these cheap card draw effects to cycle through their deck. They might have some storm cards to eventually leverage all the cards played into a lot of damage. Fists of Flame resolves. So yeah, we could have avoided all of this by just using the minus two on Sky Sovereign, killing Burgi. But uh, an emblem was too hard to resist. 
Now Underworld Breach lets them replay all those spells, but still don't think I want to Metallic Rebuke it. So they might start with Steamkin, but they only have so many spells they can cast because they also need to escape cards from the graveyard. So it's going to be a Prophetic Prism for starters. Resolves. House Red's Monuments. So they add the red mana, but I can cast Metallic Rebuke first. And then they're unable to pay. Yeah, that seems worth it. So we'll pay. I guess we can use Improvise here and then still draw an extra card. So we casually get to draw four cards end of turn. But now they can still potentially cast cards out of the graveyard, thanks to Underworld Breach. But Hazrat's Monument can lead to some infinite combos, so that seems scary to give it to the opponent. If they had a Grinning Ignis, for instance, they could cycle through their entire deck. So their opponent's going to go for a March for two. Finding not all that much. They cannot cast Tormenting Voice because they're empty-handed. This opponent just has to pass it back after attacking. Okay, we get to draw again. And hopefully we get to put these cards to good use. But it might be time to kill Burgi by replaying Tesseret and using the minus two. So it was admittedly a little scary to let the opponent untap with Burgi, but I think it was worth it in the end. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw in the Artifact Mirror, facing a blue-black Tesseret deck instead. And yeah, we've got a pretty nice opener with Signet on two, potentially setting up turn three Tesseret, and then Rivers Rebuke to bounce all their permanents back. Jengataxius could be fun too. And especially against an Artifact deck, it could counter quite a few things. Opponent might have a counterspell here. If they keep up mana next turn, not gonna go for Tesseret. We can go Heirloom into Reality Chip instead. Our own Metallic Rebuke could also come in handy. And then I imagine they'll counter Reality Chip, which we don't really care about. Right, they might have removal for it instead or wait until we try and reconfigure. Put in place Tesseret. Now we do have the option of playing our own Tesseret and using the Minus ability to weaponize one of our artifacts. There's an animation module waiting on top. So if we play Tesseret, and minus on, let's say, Heirloom or Reality Chip, we can attack for four. Wouldn't be able to keep up Metallic Rebuke, so that could be a concern. So maybe I just go Letter of Acceptance, then play Tesseret. Opponent might have a Wash Away to counter my Planeswalker as well. But I guess we'll find out. Pact of Negation instead. Alright, so they're taking on a bit of risk here, but don't have a way to deal with their treasure, so they'll be able to pay for it. But now they're tapped out, and we could resolve Jingataxius. That sounds appealing. It's unlikely for them to put enough artifacts in play to minus and kill Jin. 
And I think we can beat the emblem. Especially with River's Rebuke. So... Yeah, let's try that. Alright, opponent's got another Tesseract here. Planeswalkers get around Jin. But now we can Rivers Rebuke and then maybe keep up a counter spell on the way down. You should just concede. Padim also resolves. Alrighty, Ornithopter on top. So how much mana am I working with? Yeah, enough for Rivers Rebuke plus Metallic Rebuke. And I'm not killing any Planeswalkers here, so that seems fine. Then I can even play Module, because it's kind of free with Metallic Rebuke in a way. And then we get to double it. Send those packing. And our opponent has seen enough, yeah. This mana advantage with a Jengitaxis is going to be difficult to overcome. Alright, so we get uh, better off the Artifact Mirror match here. So quite pleased with how this mono blue Tesseract deck turned out. Has some individually powerful cards, lots of synergy, and I don't think I've ever managed to emblem a Planeswalker quite as much as with today's deck. So I highly recommend it if you like artifact decks and are maybe tired of some of the usual commanders like Emery. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.